All right, guys, time to build another custom Ford 9 inch rear end. Full fabricated housings, a whole slew of aftermarket parts to throw at this thing. And we're gonna make it how we want it. Let's get to it. I've got my unit bearing cups welded on and I'm using this little jig or tool from Rough Stuff Specialties. I've had it when I built my front nine inch and it's really helpful for number one, measuring the center of the housing, but also to measure where your axle shafts go. So it has a little slit where your pinion is because the nine inch has an offset pinion. And then this little square here is either side of where you want your axle shafts to end. So it's really easy to do. You could put your tape measure through it on one end, uh, line it up with the square, and then that will be your axle shaft length for that side. The way I cut my axle, I made it to where the axle tubes are completely symmetrical and the center of the housing is gonna be dead in the middle of my truck. You could cut one side a little bit shorter um, and kind of offset it a little bit. So that way your axle shafts are exactly the same length. It's a little bit more convenient for spares in that way. But I didn't want to build my housing with the top um, brackets offset to one side to overcompensate for that. It's definitely preference in that matter on how you set it up. If carrying spares is the most important thing, yeah, and you know, cut your axle like that to where you only have to carry one spare axle shaft. I think I'm gonna throw a 300M 35 spline axle in here, so I'm probably not gonna carry any spares, knock on wood, but we'll get these, uh, now that I have those measured, I could get them ordered and in a couple weeks, they should be here and they'll pop right in.
I'm always really interested in how much things weigh and kind of where the truck carries that weight. Um, so the stock 9 inch housing with the truss, the extra tabs, brackets, the backbone I put on there, 35 spline axles and disc brakes, uh, 298 pounds is what that thing weighs complete. So I'll be real curious to see what the new housing and setup uh, weighs. The housing is going to be quite a bit more, it's so much stronger, but I'm not going to have this top truss on there. Um, I'll save a lot of weight in the brakes, so it'll be really curious to see, like I said, uh, you know, what our difference is when we're all done. I hate this damn thing. Bring it back the wrist breaker 9000. Let's go. So real quick, I'll talk about some of the parts I used and why I used them in this build. This housing obviously is from Rough Stuff Specialties as you saw. There's several big name companies out there that I was looking at housings for. Spider Tracks and Camberg were the other two really top competitors uh, when I was choosing housings. Ultimately, I went with the Rough Stuff housing because the price was right at the time and this axle has three and a half inch, three eighths wall axle tubes, which are super beefy as you guys saw. Spider Tracks and Camberg have Cromoly axle housings and tubing, and that is awesome and strong. However, I ideally would need to use a TIG welding process to attach my link brackets to it, and I don't have that available to me at this time. So I went with this ultra beefy rough stuff housing. Overall, the housing quality is phenomenal. I'm very happy with it. The welds on it are gorgeous. I definitely can't weld that good. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's a good housing. The next part of this build that is critical is gonna be your end cups. So I went with a full float setup that attaches uh, to unit bearings. I used end cups from Spider Tracks and those were great. They had built-in brake uh, tabs for one set of brakes. I went with a unit bearing setup, number one for ease of maintenance. I can pop them on and off relatively easily and they're a, lifetime service unit. So I put them on there, 
throw on my tires and go do burnouts and stuff like that. And whenever they wear out, they're done. I don't really have to service them or worry about uh, bearing preloads and tightening up spill nuts or anything like that. So they're a kind of install and forget type of unit. Now I'm not saying don't ever check on them. They will wear out over time and you'll have to replace them. But these units from Camberg, these extreme ones, they're freaking nice. They're, they're really nice. The reason why I chose the Camberg unit bearings over say a Spider Tracks or Brannock unit bearing is primarily because I'm not running 5 8 wheel studs and all those guys only make their unit bearings in those big wheel stud versions. I don't really need the big wheel studs right now and I definitely don't feel like uh, upgrading all of my wheels and also my front unit bearings uh, to match. So that's why I went with that setup. Trail Gear is the only company that makes their brake hats for the smaller wheel stud, like I was talking about. So um, Spider Tracks has really nice brake hats, but they don't make them in for these wheel studs. Uh, same with Brannock, they don't make them to fit that either. I actually called Brannock and they only make their brake hats to fit their products. So they said even if the wheel studs were the same, they would only fit their unit bearing or their brakes and their, their rotors. Um, the rotors I got are from uh, Spider Tracks. I went with the same exact setup that I did on my front axle, so the hats and rotors are identical. One thing I did differently on the back end for the brakes is I used a Willwood six piston brake uh, for the primary brake, and that's these big ones back here. I am gonna change the front ones out. I haven't had any issues with my front brakes, but I just want to put on a bigger braking setup while I have it all apart and can do it. I took these smaller calipers off my front housing and these are going to be my um, handbrake. So I'll have a handbrake in the cab, I'll be able to actuate that and that will only be rear braking, which it's gonna be awesome for front digs whenever I uh, disengage uh, my transfer case. And it's gonna be really nice when you're going downhill and you don't want to mash on your brakes and really uh, load up the front end. I could just drag the back. Um, not very effective braking, but it's better than just letting go of the brake and praying for the best. And really to be truthful, the whole reason for these things is so I could have a little hoon handle in the truck and uh, do some real scumbaggery things, or at least attempt to, and hopefully I don't roll this thing when it's done. I made all of this out of 3 16 plate steel and it's boxed in with eighth inch. On the outsides, I put a weld washer to reinforce and build up that hole to make it strong. And then on the inside, I put captured nut plates um, for two reasons. Number one, uh, it will lock in those nuts when, when they're in there, and you always wanna lock your nuts. Uh, number two, it's uh, easier to assemble. So when you're underneath the truck and you got two bolts going in there, uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt sometimes to get a wrench in there when you're taking these links in and out. So that is definitely gonna help in that aspect, and it looks cool too, so there's that. I didn't get a weight on it because number one, I need to kind of clean up and paint my third member so I'm not ready to install that. And then number two, you remember the beginning of the video I said I'm gonna be installing some 35 spline axle shafts from Brannock and I was thinking it was only gonna take a couple weeks. I was wrong on that one, holy smokes. Um, so when I called and ordered them from Brannock, they estimated they are about six to eight weeks out right now, which thanks to the economy and uh, supply chain issues, but also King the Hammers right now too. So I'm sure there's boatloads of other people in line ahead of me to get their axle shafts. All right, so what's next on this rear end? Um, I'm gonna get it underneath the truck and I need to add sway bar brackets and limit strap tabs and brake lines. Drop down in the comments and let me know what you guys think about this custom nine inch housing that I built. And I want you guys to go out into your driveway or your shop or your garage and uh, get to work, go build something. I'm sure you have a project on jack stands like I do. So uh, yeah, it's time to turn off this YouTube video and uh, uh, do work. Thanks for hanging out in the shop today and until next time, stay reckless.